Hi. So, this is a different video. I've been having some problems with my MemoryCraft uh, 6 600 sewing machine and it's gone back to Sewing Machine Direct, which is in Ley or Thlay, uh, near Wrexham in North Wales. And they've been looking after me for oh, a good few years now with different sewing machines and um, servicing and ordering parts and just really good service. So I took it back and even through lockdown they were able to take the machine and try to work it because obviously with that sewing machine I cannot work. Uh, so they were great and we thought we'd sorted it and ordered all the new parts and David had tried to fix it and just when we thought all sorted and I bundled my mother in the car and we drove over to Wrexham to be greeted by it's done it again. And so we decided, what on earth are we going to do? So while we decide what on earth we're going to do, the lovely people at Sewing Machine Direct have loaned me this little beauty. So this is the upgrade. It's the Memory Craft 6 700. It's very similar to the other one, but it's got some really clever little bits on. So I'm just going to have a little play. And I thought I'd let you watch. So one of the really clever things with it, it's got three different plates. So I've only got two with me at the moment. And looking at them at first, I think, what is the difference between these? They look very similar. But this one is the one that is standard on the machine that comes with it. And if you look at the area here, the needle plate, where if you were doing a zigzag or an embroidery stitch, so you've got quite a bit of trying to angle it there. So we've got a bit of swing across there. Whereas the one for doing free motion work or ruler work, you angle that, has got set plate position. So you've got center, left or right, and there's a bar in the middle. So you mustn't get them mixed up. But what is wonderful is how easy it is to flip between the two. And there's a very clever device underneath the side that just flips the plate up. So no having to wrestle with screwdrivers and all you do is slide it in and pop and it's done. So that's really clever. So that's one big thing for me. Now I'm going to have a little play with a westerly foot on because obviously that's what I do. And I've set the machine up so it's got a wonderful screen that tells me that I've got the straight stitch plate on. That it won't do swing and it even gives me a little screenshot of what stitches I can do when I've got this plate on and it's really clever and it tells me tensions um, what pressure so I can adjust the pressure if needs be for this particular setting and if I want to drop the feed dog there is a slide down the side and it tells me now on here that the feed dogs have dropped. So, really clever. I am very impressed with this. So, I've threaded it up very similar how I would thread to uh, the previous machine. Uh, the automatic threader is slightly different, but I'll get used to that. So, it also comes with its own really good extension table, which you can see how big that is. So that's really good. So I'm going to put my So Steady slider grip slider in place and this just takes away any a bit more friction when you're doing a bit of uh, free motion work. So let's let's have a little play. So I've got this quilt which is um, samples of double wedding ring and we were making in one of my classes a couple of years ago and it's never been finished so I thought well this is good we'll do some practice quilting on it we'll get it finished and it can go to some deserving charity or whatever so I'm using a set of Westerly rulers which are spin effects you can see spin effects 10 and I've already done one set using uh, 9.5 this is the 5.5 and they come in a whole set of different sizes so I've used the um, 
crosshair ruler to mark out some diagonals and I'm just going to have a little play. So I'm going to put the foot back in the centre and that foot is sitting very high so I will just lower that down to there. Held on to the top thread, press the needle down button, needle back up and I've got my bobbin thread up. Put that down. Okay, and we're ready to go. So I'm just going to line the edge of the ruler foot up with that mark and let's see how we get on. Oh, couldn't be sweeter. Move round, so when I get a bit further round I'll trim those threads off. So I'm now lining the centre one up with this reference mark here. There because the foot is a bit high. Also, I need to get used to how tight things need to be. You can see we've got a bit tighter. Rotate around. So you can see I'm barely moving the quilt. I mean, it's not the biggest of quilts, but it's still a, a good size. As people often say with when we're demonstrating with ruler work that oh you're only using it on a tiny sample what's it like with a big quilt well if you look I'm only actually working in this area I'm not going over the whole quilt in one so as long as the rest of the quilt if you can see what I've done here the rest of the quilt is just pulled up so that it's not dragging I've got the side of the table as well so that's holding up any weight and it's actually really easy. Rotate finally around. So the lovely thing with ruler work is I don't need to move the quilt. Once it's in position, I'm not moving. I'm going to use the thread cutter, which I wouldn't normally do for ruler work, but I just want to show you the effect. And there. So you can see the quilting in that little area. So, uh, thank you, Sew Machine Direct. This might be something we're looking to keep. Let you know. Bye.